So I got to be a part of filming my first, I think you'd call it an indie film this week. This is what's left of the set. We built this 24 foot wide, 10 foot tall green screen in order to lower this strange blue character into a pool filled with garbage in a world filled with garbage. I'm showing a clip of it now, but this is not the real virtual world. That's still being made in Unreal Engine. This is probably just a placeholder that I made with Mid Journey AI. I wanted to talk about some things I learned during this process and maybe a thing or two I'll do differently on the next one. First, I'm a photographer, so I totally understand the settings on my cameras and light, and for the most part, how to get what I want the final shot of a thing to look like. But I'm not a filmmaker, or not yet anyways, other than YouTube videos. So I don't know the terminology all that well, and I don't know how you'd normally go about doing all the things that we were doing in the industry. So this was a tiny production. There was only three of us involved in the actual filming. Mr. Nicholas Kreider from the band Dumbwaiter, who was the writer and the director of this thing. And then he brought with him a guy named Chris, who's actually worked on real movies and TV production. Chris brought a lot of working knowledge with him into the warehouse. It was super fun to hear his stories about chopping a 747 in thirds for what ended up being just one scene of one of the Walking Dead sequels. For my part, I helped with the lighting and the camera work for two of the scenes that took place in and around my warehouse. So we had this blue character that we needed to be in a world of garbage. So Nick and Chris actually spent a few days collecting garbage from recycling facilities around here, and then they stood outside and spray painted it. Mind you, it is 98 degrees in Orlando, Florida. Right where I'm sitting, we set up what was to look like an old swimming pool full of trash in front of this big 24 foot green screen so that it could be set into a world full of trash. In reality, the swimming pool was just a strip of this construction material called ram board. It's like really hardy cardboard that comes on a roll. Chris painted it, then we made it into a big circle. And then Nick had this brilliant idea of lining the inside with another smaller circle and then a film of plastic between the two. So we didn't actually have to fill up this pool with trash. The trash was just the top layer, just the a couple inches below the, the edges. Movie magic. He also made this frame to sit under one part of the plastic so he could climb in and out of the center hole that he'd be sitting in. Oh, I'm moving, this is uncomfortable. It needed a bunch of adjustments and ultimately he ended up making this little frame on the inside and then yanking out the tops of this thing with little ropes tied to cinder blocks. But it turns out little solutions like that are just part of the process. It's really fun. I mean, we're building a thing that needs to last for like 80 minutes and then it just gets torn down forever. Lighting a giant green screen. Turns out, at least with Final Cut Pro, using warm lights makes your key out in a green screen not work as well. Well, I should say warm lighting on the green screen if you've got daylight colored lights on the rest of your set. So we had set up this truss system that you can see behind me over the top of the green screen to try to evenly light this much area without having any equipment in any of the shots. Initially, we had a couple of dozen spotlights up there that are about 3500K temperature. That's the color of the light, the more yellow. Similar in color to the old timey light bulbs that you would have in your house. But my key lights, these bigger lights that I use for my YouTube set are daylight balanced. So they're like 5,500K. Initially in the test footage, we had the camera set to 5,500K so that it would match the stuff in the foreground. But that made the green screen look really kind of like mossy green because of the white balance. And I'm not sure why, but with that combination of these things happening, it made the key out super messy in Final Cut. Oh, and then the other problem is that we just had a ton of light on the wall at first. There was probably like 30 light bulbs up there initially, so that thing was just super bright. And then the foreground wasn't as bright and we had to expose for the foreground, which would make that completely blow out. And rather than having to just add double the lights in the foreground, I went up and took out a bunch of lights from the overhead. And then to fix the problem with the white balance, we swapped out all my key lights for a bunch of cheapy warmer lights that I just had around the warehouse. So the whole set was then shot on these 3500K lights. And I had one powerful spotlight with a reflector on it that would be shooting just the character above the pool. His skin tone wasn't that important because he's blue. And then doing that, switching the white balance of my cameras to 3500, fixed all of the key out issues, fixed all the green screen issues. If you are gonna do green screening, it's important that the lighting for the screen is completely separate than the lighting from everything else because you don't wanna cast shadows onto the screen. So the lights for the screen have to be pretty close to it, but also wide enough to wash the whole thing. I'm pretty successfully doing it right now though with just, I think just three lights on stands, three pretty low powered lights on stands. I guess I'll test the key out uh, by putting something on the green screen in the edit. Although I've got this like halo of white light because I have a light back there for a rim light. I don't know. Anyway, that was a tangent. Another thing I learned while doing this project was the importance of manual focus sometimes. My prior experience has just been shooting YouTube videos or race cars, but nothing is really around them. And so I have been fully dependent on autofocus my whole career. But with this project, we were shooting three different camera angles for most of the shots. And not only is the main character not recognized by autofocus as a human, because he's not, but also we were very often shooting through like a mess of props and wanted the focus to land on one 
particular point. With a new Sony camera and a human face, you can move around as much as you want and the autofocus is always just gonna grab you and keep you. So it's pretty reliable and I've been using it for years. Anyway, so I got a good lesson in setting markers and planning shots really carefully, doing dry runs and then putting the cameras in manual if I wasn't gonna be holding it during filming. When Mr. Blue Man pulled his head up for this shot, we needed that to be the focus. And we didn't want it to pull focus like autofocus would do. We wanted the camera just to be in the right focal plane already when he pulled his head up. But the camera sure wasn't gonna know that, so gaff tape. The next thing that was gonna be a pretty major challenge, and actually one of the few things that these guys had planned to budget for was an emergency vehicle. Part of the story is this weird world kind of snapping back into reality and everyone's on a set when the blue man had gotten injured. I'm rolling. and he needed to be rolled out into an ambulance on a gurney. Turns out you actually can rent an ambulance for this sort of thing, but it costs a lot, and we were trying to think of other ways to get the same effect. We even went and found an ambulance outfitting company, like the place that builds trucks into ambulances. We drove over there to see if it would be feasible to find one that was just like maybe parked in their parking lot at night or something, and we could film around it. But day two rolls around, and what are the fucking odds? But the warehouse that's across the parking lot from mine, they paint and retrofit food trucks, and by golly, something called emergency response catering had rolled in there. First response, catering, which was clearly an old fire truck that had been turned into a food truck, but the front of it was still a fire truck. So under the cover of darkness, we took these two little battery powered lights that can blink red and blue. We first got a shot of him being rolled out and passed all of the equipment in the warehouse, which in reality was like this yellow plastic stretcher on top of two buckets on a rolling flight case. And so we rolled that over by the food truck and we shot a couple more takes of just rolling him past the truck handheld. And for one of them, I actually jumped up on the flight case, shot straight down at his face to get a good close up. And just like that, bim bam boom, we saved 500 bucks by implying he was going to an emergency vehicle rather than renting one and having him actually shoved into the back, which was the original idea. To capture the injury itself, and none of what you're seeing is the final edit, is probably won't come out for months. They're still shooting more in North Carolina, so none of this is what it's really gonna look like. But anyway, he wanted a shot from the top down with like a theater spotlight hitting him in the face. I have one of these cheap spotlights that does make a hard circle. Which one of these is it? Yeah, so I have I have one of these that can achieve that, but it has a really long throw. That wall is actually 20 feet behind me back there. So we did the definitely OSHA approved thing and had me and Chris on a pallet on the forklift, holding a couple of cameras and a spotlight and made the dream come true. The light is on. Filmmaking is just problem solving a director's dreams. It's like being the engineer on a structure where the architect wants to take out one of the load bearing walls so that he can have a more open concept floor plan. And I really enjoyed it. I don't know what to do with this giant green screen now. Like I wanna have a use for it, but this being my regular shot with it behind me there, it just really looks really bad. So I'm gonna roll it up and keep it. Feel free to give me ideas on what to do with it. Yeah, filmmaking. He's all rolling. This one, take two. Okay. Now we can set up for that side profile shot. 